going on, everybody? NFL Draft is right around the corner, a couple days away. This is the awkward stages. I know we all just want the draft to get here. Let's hit a mock draft review, huh? Good morning, football co-host Peter Schrager. We're going to go over his today. Just came out. It's going to be a, a good one. A lot of movement, exciting picks. Hope you guys like it. Let's get into the video. <laughs> a mess but that is not why we're here peter schrager 2024 nfl mock draft 1.0 putting it out april 16th at 1.0 is wild all right giants leap up for jj viking stick and pick let's go boom reminder as always this isn't what i would do this is what i'm hearing from my sources around the league draft april 25th to april 27th expect more content from this channel Draft is going to be crazy. Crazy. Numero uno. Obviously, Caleb Williams. I think the world knows this. They got rid of Justin Fields. Um, it's going to be Caleb Williams. I don't know how else to put this, right? As I reported, the Bears had a great meeting with Caleb, blah, blah, blah. They're all in. Yeah. Not going to waste too much time there. Washington Commanders with Jaden Daniels. After skipping measurements in Indianapolis, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner pleasantly surprised many folks at LSU's Pro Day by weighing in at a pretty robust 210 pounds. As of today, I think Daniels is the number two pick. You guys want to know the truth? So do I. I think Daniels is number two. I think he is the second best QB in the draft. Um, and I think Washington's been... Kind of like, I don't want to say obvious about this, but Jaden Daniels is in your number two, for sure. <laughs> Moving on to number three, you got Drake May, North Carolina QB. Despite lines of smoke that New England could trade down, I believe this new Patriots regime. Remember, Bill Belichick is not there. We'll be comfortable with either Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Honestly, you can't really go wrong at spot three. Whatever one falls, you take. So... Whatever. they That said, they also love their top 30 visit with Daniels, if he's there. I think they're fine with whatever falls to them. New England also wind and dined QB J.J. McCarthy on Monday night, but I still see this selection being Daniels or May. I agree. They realistically have to take out J.J. McCarthy. They have to take out Daniels. Um, they know they're not getting Caleb. That's why they didn't do it. So... Honestly, that whole wind and dine thing, not a big deal. This is pretty good so far. Let's see at number four. We got movement. New York Giants going up to four to get JJ. Whoa. Cardinals trade number four to the New York Giants. New York moves up two spots, tossing Arizona this year's third round pick. And next year's second round. So they go from six to four. Give up their third this year and next year's second. This is a great trade for the Arizona Cardinals. Great trade. All right. To land McCarthy. This is merely a mock draft, but I can see this deal coming to fruition. Joe Schoen did not draft Daniel Jones. J.J. McCarthy is a winner. He does. Checks a lot of boxes. Big blue can't really get out of Daniel Jones contract. They're kind of screwed with that one. So yeah, they're moving up, getting the Michigan QB aggressive. I kind of like it. I don't think to be honest, I don't think they need to move up to make this pick. Whatever chargers, my Los Angeles chargers at five. What do you do here? <laughs> There he is. There he is. Some teams like Malik Neighbors more than Harrison. Don't agree with that. Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Los Angeles Chargers. If you don't know his name and you have anything to do with the draft, you don't have anything to do with the draft. We'll leave it at that. Others may like Rome Azune, but I think Harrison ultimately 
fits. No, he's the first receiver taken, no matter what. I don't even care what he has to say the rest. Perfect match with Herbert and Jim Harbaugh. Agree. If they, he falls to five, yeah. This is interesting. The Cardinals taking Rome over Malik Neighbors is an interesting pick. I have Neighbors as my number two, not Rome. But the Cardinals trade back two spots, yet still scoop up a number one wide out for Kyler Murray. He's a tough, smart player, the perfect kind of building block for this franchise in this moment. I think Malik Neighbors is the better pick here. But I don't hate this. If you can grab this draft capital, I don't hate this. Seven. This is a lock. There's no reason they're not going either for Shanu or Olt. Sorry. Joe Olt. Standing nearly six foot nine, nimble feet, Notre Dame star, son of former Pro Bowl John Alt, getting a towering protector from Will Levis's blindside would be yet another mwah, chef's kiss on what has been an incredible offseason for Tennessee. Tennessee Titans will drool if this falls to them. I put out a short earlier today. Atlanta Falcons, Dallas Turner. Agree with this. Agree with this. They did it almost 10 years ago with Vic Beasley in the eight spot. I kind of like this. With a top 10. hey -o, How you doing? With a top 10 pick in each of the past three drafts, the Falcons have gone tight end, wide receiver, running back. You got to go defense. Okay? So they won't be taking Malik neighbors, even though that would be crazy. It'll make their offense insane. Atlanta fills a long-standing need on edge with an explosive pass rusher out of Alabama. So far, I really like this mock draft. There it is. There it is. This is so cool for that Colts offense. This is really cool for that Colts offense. Malik Neighbors going number nine to the Colts. Whoa. And they trade with the Bears. All right, so the Colts send Chicago a future second-round pick in order to move up six slots and pounce on neighbors. Interesting. Very interesting. Move up six spots. Bears already got their number one pick. They grab a next year's second and move back six. I like that for the Bears. And I like this for the Colts. This is a win-win situation for both teams. AFC South that saw the Jaguars, Texans, and Titans all aggressively attack free agency. Yeah, this is great for Anthony Richardson. You have Pierce, Pittman, Neighbors, Big Boy Jelani. I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, yeah, I. everybody says this. Everybody sees this. Brock Bowers to the Jets. I have a weird feeling some team's going to move up and take Brock. I, I don't know why. I really don't. I think a team trades here at number nine to take Brock because they know the Jets. I, I don't know why. If Neighbors falls, I see that, but whatever. This is a special prospect. In fact, I've been told by multiple general managers that I'm not high enough on Bowers and that his ability after the catch sets him apart from just about every tight end prospect since Kyle Pitts. Excellent player, winner, another weapon for Rodgers to exploit. This pairing does indeed make a ton of sense. That offense would be crazy. Rodgers has got to stay healthy, but that offense would be crazy. I don't think Brock Bowers falls out of the top 10. He's insane. Terry on Arnold. This kid really flew up the draft boards throughout the year, to be honest. Vikings sticking and picking. Kind of cool. Vikings stay put, take a top corner. Great all-around prospect. He arrived as a five-star safety. Played inside and outside corner under, of course, Nick Saban. <laughs> Flourished in Alabama. Great juice and leader Sam Darnold will be the Vikings' day one starter in this scenario. But that doesn't mean Minnesota's done with the QB room. As you guys know, they have another pick. I like this. Best available. Lockdown corner. Smart move. <laughs> Lot two. The edge out of UCLA. Denver, man. I like this. Viewed many, viewed by many as the best pure pass rusher in the draft. Latu absolutely could end up in Denver. If the board falls this way, the Broncos would, of course, love to move up and get that top four QB. But 
That's they just don't have the ammunition. They can't give it up. I'm sure, they would really like that Russell Wilson thing back. Whatever, not going there. But they'd love to really have Bo Nix or Michael Penix. But to take either of them at twelve, ain't it? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I was wondering when this man was gonna go. Fashanu, Penn State offensive tackle, Raiders. Great move. Great move. Raiders need to build up the offense in this draft. Continuing to fortify the offensive line makes a lot of sense. Tom Telesco, former GM of the Chargers, by the way, hit on most of his first-round picks as general manager of the Chargers. There you go. Now he's looking to do the same with the rival Raiders. Fashanu might have the highest upside of all tackle prospects. Kid's raw. Kid's good. He's young, too. He's a young junior. He's good. And then you got Fuwanga. Fuwaga. Not Fuwanga. Fuwaga. Oregon State tackle. Crazy. Tackle, but can play anywhere on the offensive line if needed. This one might be met with shrugs in New Orleans. But I can see this franchise cornerstone selection by the Saints. Brass. He has a mean streak and a motor that doesn't quit. I say it every year. I'll say it every video. Can't go wrong with selecting offensive line. You can't. Back to back to back tackles. Why do we love this? They trade back. And what do you do? You make sure Caleb is all right. After piling up more draft capital by trading back, the Bears still land a stud offensive tackle. Okay, JC could be see, could be the second offensive tackle taken on draft night. Some teams like him that much. The board falls this way. The Chargers add a big pedigreed bookend who can join last year's first round tackle, Darnell Wright, in protecting Caleb Williams and his painted nails. Like it. Really like this. What a run on offensive line. Troy. Big Troy. Washington. Seattle stays local and snags the versatile offensive lineman from the University of Washington. Seattle can insert, I'm going to butcher the name, Fuantu. Wherever needed up front. And the nimble, nasty blocker significantly upgrades the unit on day numero uno. Agreed. Jaguars making an absolute necessary pick, too. Quinion Mitchell. Really like this. Guys, don't roast me for names. Sit here, try to say them yourselves. There's so many names every year. I'm going to say some wrong. It is what it is. Number 17, the Jaguars are thrilled to nab a cornerback with everything you want at the position. Size, speed, playmaking ability, and irrational confidence. Crazy. I love Mitchell saying that he's the greatest football to ever come out of the Mac. Jack Lambert, Randy Moss, Brandy, oh, Brandy, Jesus Christ, Ben Roethlisberger, watch out. You know how funny that is? Hey, love the confidence. Oh. I'm interested in where, okay, that wasn't going to be the guy, but I'm interested to see where he has Drazon Newton. Murphy's a top interior defensive line prospect in this class. He has interviewed well, worked out. He is a workout warrior in Indy, BJ Hill, and free agent edition. Sheldon rankings are solid veterans inside. Murphy would fortify the group with his highly destructive game. Bengals get a nasty. This is a nasty man at defensive tackle. This boy is nasty. We're going to hit. Three picks right here. You ready? We're going to start moving. Los Angeles Rams, Tyler Guyton, tackle again. I'll go on record with something of a guarantee here. If the Rams do not trade back, you better believe Sean McVay's first ever first round selection will be an offensive player. Los Angeles shored up. It's I totally forgot that they actually have a first round pick this year. Really weird. All right, short up its interior offensive line in the free agency. Got in a bit of a project, but someone who can play either tackle spot and gives Stafford another promising young guy to protect him in his 16th season. Brian Thomas Jr., who is a beast out of LSU. Still keeping an eye on the Steelers DM to make a splash of wide receiver this offseason. Could that be a trade for Brandon Ayuk? They're favored to land him. 
but Thomas is a special talent who helps himself at the combine as much as any player at the position. You got it, Fields. You brought in Wilson. You got rid of Kenny. You got rid of Johnson. You better believe there's going to be a wide receiver coming somewhere. Dolphins going Jared Verse. He was, guys, he was the number one edge going into the year at the end of last year. I like this pick for the Dolphins. This point, Verse could come off the board at various junctures of the top 25, and I wouldn't be surprised. In a relatively down year for the D-line prospect, Verse does a lot of things well. Versatile and experienced, he lined up everywhere for the Seminoles. Dolphins D-line lost two big pieces in Wilkins and Van Gengel. I think it's a good pick. Really good pick. Who we got at 22? Pow! Oh, man, if the freaking Eagles get this. It just feels like every year the Eagles give, like, like a handout in the draft. It's crazy. Cooper DeJean, I'm in love with this kid. He's a beast. He's everywhere. Does everything right. Outstanding college career at Iowa. Showed out of his private workouts. Corner or safety. Special team Swiss Army knife. Is 22 too rich? Maybe. But he's an eagle. Damn. Vikings. This ain't bad for the Vikings. Knicks could go as high as 11, 12, or 13. Or completely fall out of the first round. I think 23 to the Vikings or another team around here in the trade-up makes sense. One thing on Knicks, he's as accurate as they come, just having having just set the FBS record this past season with a complete percentage of 77.45. Smart processor 2. These are things that will be very highly valued by offensive coaches and QB gurus. That's Kevin O'Connell. That's Sean Payton. I can see Knicks playing for either of those master technicians. By the way, look at how many times this pick has moved around. Crazy. Cowboys going Xavier Worthy. Why is this a Jerry Jones pick? This is such a Jerry Jones pick. It really is. Officially the fastest man in combine history, Worthy would be a wonderful addition as a deep threat for Dak. With contract issues looming over Prescott and C.D. Lamb, the selection of Worthy would show both a commitment to adding pieces on offense without sacrificing major cap in free agency. Packers and Marius Mims, how many tackles are in this draft? It's crazy. It's crazy. Massive. Six foot eight, three forty. Mims has tremendous upside despite a lack of experience at Georgia. Eight total starts. He's shown enticing flashes in the big games. This is a deep wide receiver and O-line draft. The Packers got plenty of production out of their young wide receivers and tight end last year. They bypass taking a first-round wideout and grab a gifted offensive tackle prospect. I like it. He's huge. Graham Barton at Duke, Tampa. Love this. Love this. You lock up Baker. Tampa has quietly enjoyed one of the best off seasons in the league. Having retained many key assets from last year's divisional round squad, offensive line is still one of the areas of need. Barton played tackle and center at Duke. He could do either in the NFL. Always lovely to grab a versatile offensive lineman. I'm still looking for that name, man. Darius Robinson is not it. But Arizona Cardinals. Robinson is one of the biggest risers in this draft class. At this point, wouldn't be surprised if he goes in the top 20. Versatile, experienced, and high-motored, this Missouri product has a lot of fans in the league. The Cardinals get a wide receiver and a pass rusher in the first round, filling two major needs. Really good draft by the Cardinals so far. Still not. Makes sense. This pick makes a lot of sense. Mitchell out of Texas. The Bills stay put and get... Still one of the top wideout prospects in the draft. Big, fast. Is Keon Coleman going in the first round, too? Big, fast, physical Mitchell. 
garners plenty of interest in league circles. This is lower than where some other mock drafts have him going. He could be lingering mid to late 20s. As you guys know, Stefan Diggs is no longer there. They need to replace him. Big Zach Frazier. God, this is such a Lions pick. Really good. Former state wrestling champion who's nasty, versatile, hungry. This is a Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell prospect if they're... I swear I didn't read this. That's crazy. If we learn anything from Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell's pick last year, it's the Lions draft guys they like as opposed to dwelling on needs and perceived positional values. And it worked out for them. They destroyed the NFL draft last year. They killed it. Baltimore Ravens. Boom. What a Ravens pick. Kool-Aid McKinstry. The Alabama to Baltimore pipeline remains strong, even with Ozzie Newsom in an advisory role and Eric DaCosta steering the ship. McKinstry is smooth and fluid, and though he didn't run the fastest 40 in Indy, his play speed was not a prop down in Alabama. These have good corners and safeties. I don't know what they do in Baltimore, man, but they always have good corners and safeties. Yeah. Lad McGogney. This is a great IU replacement. Assuming he leaves. San Francisco 49ers. McCockney in the first round? Yes. Above guys like Troy Franklin and Keon Coleman? Perhaps. Spoken to a lot of people over the past few months, and I'm not sure there's a single prospect who has universally liked as a lad. Tough, smart, selfless. San Francisco seems to be a perfect home. Him and Debo together would be really cool. And Kittle. And we round it off with... Interesting. Jalen Polk. Sorry for hitting the mic. Polk is a personal favorite. I keep hearing his name from football people I trust. There's uncertainty in the Chiefs wide receiver room, especially given Rasheed Rice legal issues. Mm. Texas Tech product Patrick Mahomes gets a former Red Raider who spent the past three seasons at Washington making countless big plays through the 2023 Huskies run to the national title game. Peter Schrager's mock draft, baby. This was a good mock draft review. He has good movement here. Um, a lot of picks that actually make sense. This is such a Jerry Jones pick. He had what? This pick, the Lions pick, and uh, somebody else. I forget who I said. But, man, they just like really just fit the personalities of the team. Oh, Ravens. But I really like the moves. I think Malik Neighbors falls a little bit far here. I do find this a very interesting trade. Uh, I mean, this is a match made in heaven. Like, come on. If it's not Fashanu, it's Alt. Come on. This I find interesting over Malik. This I find very, very interesting. But this, this is crazy. This is the talk of this. This is literally the talk of this draft. Of this mock draft. This is the talk of this mock draft. That's insane. Giants moving from 6 to 4. Sorry, I'm really stuffy. 6 to 4 to grab it. J.J. McCarthy. I have a couple Giants friends. They would not be happy with this. But, guys, Two Tone Sports here. If you guys like what you see, hit that bell notification. Like the video. You'll be seeing a lot more content soon, baby. We're back monetized. See you guys soon. Enjoy the draft.